Hello, I am Corey Vedhop. Today I'm going to show you how to adjust the air fuel mixture on this Edelbrock carburetor. To my knowledge, there are three ways to adjust the air fuel mixture. Do you need to perform all three? No. You only need to perform one of them depending on your tools and capability. If your carburetor is already in tune, and what I mean by that is, do you have the correct meter rods, jets, is your float adjusted? If they are, then you only need to perform one of these tasks. I'm showing you three different ways so that you can choose one based on your capability and tools available. Let's get started. This is the Edelbrock 1406. The air fuel air mixture screw is right here and here. Simply just turn it in and turn it out. I'll go ahead and demonstrate how you can do that here in a second. One of the easy ways of adjusting the air fuel air mixture screw is just by turning it in and out. And as you hear the RPMs drop, then back it out a little bit. There we go, you hear those RPMs drop? Let me go ahead and back it out a quarter of a turn. Go ahead and do the driver's side. RPM drop. Go back out. RPM drop. Got a quarter of a turn. And once you do that, then go ahead and adjust the RPMs to 850 on the 350 Chevy engine. You just go back and forth until you get that little sweet spot. Another way of doing it is with a vacuum gauge. When using a vacuum gauge, you just go back and forth between each side and do an air mixture screw and adjust. And back out. The goal is to get max vacuum. Of course, adjust the RPMs afterwards to 850 RPMs. Keep going back and forth until you find a sweet spot, sweet spot using the vacuum cleaner. Now, adjusting the air fuel mixture on the Edelbrock is fine if your carburetor is already tuned. But what if it's not? What if the jets need to be replaced, the needles, or the springs? So, how do you know? what the air fuel mixture is. The ideal rate is 14.7 on the O2 sensor. And that's why I have this Innovate meter that's gonna tell us just how close we are. If we are not close, even though it may sound good by ear and vacuum may look good on the vacuum meter, it still may not be firing exactly perfect with the air fuel mixture. So this will tell us. Our goal is to reach 14.7 on the gauge. What this requires is one, to be hooked up to the cigarette lighter with this, and then of course the O2 sensor connected to the exhaust. I'll go ahead and do that, fire it up, and see how close we are. One of the nice things that I have is a, an adapter that's part of the uh, Innovate uh, kit. It allows me to put my oxygen sensor into this and just put this right inside the exhaust. That way I don't have to drill a special hole or anything inside the exhaust system. Seems to work great. This is what it looks like as it's connected to my exhaust. You can see it's just kind of going inside the exhaust system. Of course I'll have to do one side at a time because I only have one uh, O2 sensor. Go ahead and power the meter up. Now we'll start uh, the Corvette and see what it reads the O2 sensor. This should be reading around 14.7. As you can see, even though when we did the adjustments on the fuel air mixture on the Edelbrock carburetor, it sounded good, RPMs are good, but we're still off. This should be 14.7. So even though it sounds like it's right, we still got some work to do. And my bet is we need to adjust some of those springs and needles. And maybe even some jets. We'll give it a try. We'll start with a needle first. Put that in and then uh, retest it and see what we got. What I have is a kit 
1487 from Edelbrock. Inside this kit, as you can see, I have some jets, some needles, and springs. We're going to start off with some needles first and retest and just kind of hit and miss until we get it right. Well, I changed the metering rod and it didn't work, so I ended up changing uh, the main jet. And as you can see, I'm very close to 14.7. It kind of goes back and forth a little high, a little low. But that's, that's very good. What did I learn from this? No matter how good you think your ears are when adjusting the fuel air mixture screw, or even the vacuum gauge, you can get close. But clearly, the best fuel air mixture is with the Innovate fuel air mixture meter. And what that ended up doing for me is I ended up changing one of the main jets in order to get close to that. The driver's side exhaust and adjusted the fuel air mixture screw. Just a little, getting very close. 14.7, 14.8, drops to 14.4. Now that's at idle. Of course, I need to run it at cruise mode, out on the road, and at high speed. You can see how it reads then, too. But, but this is the way to do it. What did we learn today? We learned there were three ways to adjust the fuel air mixture on a carburetor. Either one of the ways is good and you only normally have to do one as long as your carburetor is in tune. The first way was by listening to RPMs. You listen to max RPMs and then turn it down, the fuel air mixture screw down clockwise and then turn it out one quarter turn so that you achieve max RPMs. In a sense, a vacuum gauge works the same way in which you're trying to achieve max vacuum by turning the fuel air mixture screw on either side to achieve max vacuum. Once you do that, you turn it out one quarter turn. You go back and forth on each side of the carburetor until you achieve that. And the final step is to, or to adjust the RPMs to 850 RPMs. Now those work fine as long as your carburetor is in tune. But what we found out on this car is the carburetor was not in tune. And we found that out by using the Innovate LM2 fuel air mixture gauge meter by trying to achieve that 14.7. With the standard setup on the carburetor, we couldn't adjust it. We couldn't achieve the 14.7. So then we in turn changed the jet. By changing the jet, it allowed us to go down to the correct fuel air mixture of 14.7. With that, I hope you learned something on how to adjust the air fuel mixture on your carburetor. Continue to watch and remember, keep those cars on the road.